episode one of my brand new YouTube series, What's Under That Rock. Let's check out what we can find today. We're gonna to flip about 50 rocks and see what we can find. My TikTok series has blown up, so let's cross it over to YouTube and see what we can find. Let's get into it. Hey, rock one. Let's check out what's underneath here, hey? Hey. Oh my goodness, a sea hare. He's been stuck here for a while, obviously, as you can see. The tide has dropped significantly. And these sea hares get stuck pretty much everywhere when the tide goes out. Luckily for him, there's still a bit of water around. Look at that, there's actually another one. I'm definitely gonna move these two, even though they're in the water here. Uh, the tide has about, oh, I'd say three hours before the water reaches this height again. So we're gonna move these two fellas out of here because they're gonna get more and more dry. I know, mate, sorry. This purple ink that you're seeing here isn't poisonous to us, but it's poisonous to dogs. Basically, they release that ink when they feel threatened so they can make a quick getaway in the water. Pretty cool, right? But he for sure would have dried up there relatively quickly, along with his friend. So we'll move him back down here into the water and I'll get his friend as well. There you go, mate. There we go, he'll be good there. Let's go get his friend. Sea hairs dry up here all the time. We probably save five or 10 a day. Let's come back here. See how far away they were. Alrighty. It does look like there's a bit of water here, but this is gonna dry up very quickly. So we'll move him. Try to be real careful. There you go, buddy. There we go. He's released some ink as well, as you would if a giant grabs you. But I'm doing it for their health and for their safety. Because I know for sure they'll dry up there. Plus they're not too far away, so if that was their home, they can always make it back over there when the tide comes back up again. So that was rock number one. Let's see what else is under a few rocks, a few other rocks today. Oh. Make sure he sticks to the ground there. There we go. Sweet. Now I'll go flip that rock back over and we'll find some more. And we have rock number two here. Let's check it out. Ugh. Oh, we actually got a lot of liveies under here. Holy moly, look at that little anemone. Nice little kite in there and some other no right looking shells. Ugh. But of course, what we spot straight away is an Australian bonnet shell. Cool, man. So this one's scientific name is Phallium banditum, and this is usually the uh, common size of them. They do get actually pretty big if you're lucky enough to find them. The biggest one I've ever found is about, uh, I think it's about five inches, six inches maybe, and it's actually a checkered bonnet. So that's pretty cool. They're very, very common here after storms. They usually get stuck under or between these rocks. They're pretty fun to find. They're everywhere. But look at this. I haven't seen one of these before actually ever. Never, ever have I found one of these. No idea what sort of uh, cowrie shell it is exactly. If I were to take a guess, yes, it is a cowrie shell. It's a juvenile cowrie. It is not an olive shell. I know it does look like an olive but uh, I guarantee you it is a cowrie shell. It's just a juvenile, so it hasn't grown its teeth yet. But I've never ever seen one. If I had to guess, it might be a juvenile lynx cowrie or something like that. Please comment down below if you know. Yeah, that's some pretty cool finds right there. A little bonnet shell and whatever that cowrie shell is. Pretty cool, so uh, yeah, we'll gently place this rock back down. Always put the rock back down where you found it because as you just saw, there are things living underneath it. So we'll take our two finds right there and try to find another rock. Guys, rock number three here. Let's check out what's underneath it. But first, I do want to just say something real quickly. In these episodes that we film, uh, I do actually lift up probably hundreds of rocks, but I only show some of the most exciting ones uh, that have the most exciting stuff under it. Otherwise, the video would, one, be very boring, just lifting up rocks and finding nothing under them. And two, it would probably be about a 10 hour video lifting hundreds and hundreds of rocks. So let's check out what's under this one. 
So, this is about our 10th rock in a row that there's been nothing. Holy moly, that is so much stuff. Wait a second, finally. We've literally lifted up like 10 or 15 rocks so far and have found nothing. Look at this. This has so much we can talk about. First thing that I want to show you guys is one of these little razor clams. If I can get the stuff out of it. Look at that. That is actually super thin. Wow. Probably gonna keep that. I don't really keep many of these clams, but that is really cool how super thin it is. So that's really cool. Comment down below, have you ever seen one of these? I think they're really cool actually. Wow, what is this? Some sort of pipe? Oh, it's actually a stick. Okay, we're good. But look, checkered bonnet, maybe. Might be broken. No, everything here, look how, yeah, look how far we are from the water. Everything here is like super dry. So that's awesome. Nice little checkered bonnet right there. Finally found some shells after like 10 rocks. Look at that. Oh, that would have been nice. Would have been really nice. Yeah, look at this guys. Some of you may not know what this is. So this is a vertebrae, so like a backbone from a shark. Now I know sharks don't have bones, but this is like a cartilage basically. Very cool, right? Yeah, I've found probably three or four of these the last couple of weeks. Very interesting. Very cool things. Can I go and shot? Pretty, wait, what is this? Oh, that's a leader for a uh, mm. fishing rod. <laughs> Good to get that out of the ocean at least. This is such a nice rock. Look at all the live stuff under it. So what do we have? What do we have? We have a lot. Oh, that one's actually empty. This is a serith cone. Like... There are probably a thousand of these live ones within a meter of us. Let me grab this one. Yeah, this is for sure live. You can't see the crabby in there, but I guarantee it is because they always sit up on top of the rocks here and enjoy the sun. So I'm probably not, oh yeah, there it is. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but I definitely saw some legs in there. It's pretty cool. And we have a little nerite, I think these are called. Oh. Oops, that's definitely live. These are everywhere as well. See, look at them on top here. Well, underneath. See that? Oh, wow. So this is why you want to flip the rocks back over where you found them when you're done. Because these guys live all up underneath them. At most beaches, anyway. Be careful too, because that's their house as well. Alright, let's see what other rocks we can find. Rock number four. Let's check it out. Come on, it's been about six rock lifts since we found something so hopefully this is it Ugh. whoa finally yes look gimme look at this thing massive uh What's that? it's a pen shell i'm pretty positive it's a pen shell it's definitely a type of pen shell look at that might not look very pretty but uh these are pretty rare for us here in queensland i do know that in florida they get mountains and mountains of these washing up sometimes most of the time live but these are very common in places like florida but here as you can tell by my excitement these are pretty cool to find that's definitely the biggest one i've ever found too let's check out what else is through here lots of little shell grit Hey, we actually do have some eggs here from something. Not sure what from, but they're definitely eggs. See all the life that's living under here? Very cool, you've got some sea sponge-like substance there. Some uh, growing algae for some uh, sea cucumbers to eat and sea hares to eat. Sea hares and all that sort of thing love to eat this stuff. So that's another reason why you wanna flip the rocks back over so things like that can keep growing not much else through here though that was a really nice find i really should have my glove on so i don't get bit by mr crabs happens more often than you think guys even through the glove sometimes not much there but i do see mr c cucumber there nasty but yeah that was a nice little find right there comment down below if you do know the name of this one Again, I know it's a pen shell, but what type exactly? These uh, round tips here give me an indication that it's not just a common pen shell. Pretty cool. And let's flip the rock back over gently. There we go. And let's continue our search. 
four shells. Made our way down to the far end of the beach here. Haven't had much luck recently flipping over rocks. We've probably lifted up about 10 to 15 rocks so far and haven't had much luck. So we are here again, checking one out. And I really wanted to show this one because it looks like we have a really cool, interesting uh, sea bush right there. Oh no. Oh my goodness, we have a nasty sea cucumber. Guys, if you haven't already seen my uh, my TikTok series, we find sea cucumbers all the time. That is nasty. What do you mean? What is it? Whoa! That's so cool. Oh, I don't want to touch that stuff. Oh, come on. Oh my goodness. Is it good? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yo, that is so nice though. Wow. Can you help? Alrighty, so we've just cleaned up all the uh, sea cucumbers mess off of the shell. And check it out. It is absolutely fantastic. I've actually never found one of these uh, before. So that's really exciting. Absolutely awesome uh, patterns on it. Really nice condition. But yeah, as we were cleaning up the stuff from it that was attached to it, look what's in this mess as well. This, uh, the, the sea cucumbers webs are super sticky, as you can see. So it's actually stuck to this cherry carry shell. Um, it's gonna be a bit difficult. What's that? Yeah, so sea cucumbers do this when they're afraid, just like uh, sea hares do, or when they feel uh, threatened. So it's not like, yeah, it's not like it's, uh, basically what I'm saying is, whenever the sea cucumber feels threatened, they'll release this stuff, and whatever animal is threatening it, it will get caught up in uh, the strings because it's extremely sticky and they'll be able to make a quick getaway or maybe even eat the animal that's trying to trying to harm it or scare it or whatever. Like yeah, pretty much like Spider-Man. <laughs> it's pretty cool. We've got another nice little limpet shell in there, but definitely not going to be able to get that out of that mess. Pretty cool though. Uh, yeah, I also wanted to show you guys this. Look at this. This is a little sea bush. Maybe a little kelp bush or something. I thought it was pretty cool though. But yeah, the cherry carry we found out of that little plump. It's really, really nice condition. Super nice. Nice little purple teeth. But yeah, that's the that's the sea cucumber. And I absolutely hate them. Can't stand them. I think they are nasty. Well, they are invasive. Oh, here's a little bean carry. I'm pretty sure they're invasive, yeah. They're absolutely everywhere here. It's a nice little bean carry. So yeah, that was an absolutely nice score. Yeah, that's definitely one of the best ton shells we've ever found, 100%. Yeah, very nice. Looks like we took Mr. Sea Cucumber's shell though, since it was <laughs> under him, but uh, sorry mate. Awesome, well, let's see what else we can find. Yeah, we'll flip it back over. Put these down here. Can you just move him 